So now we're going to talk about a little bit about fructose metabolism. Okay, so we'll go over the pathway, we'll talk about some of the deficiencies you can have, and some of the treatments that uh, go along with those deficiencies. So first off, you start with sorbitol, okay, and that comes from your diet. Um, also sucrose, same thing, okay, and this is divided into glucose and fructose, okay. Now, fructose gets converted into fructose 1-phosphate, fructose 1-phosphate, by fructokinase, okay? And we all know that kinases phosphorylate things, and fructo um, phosphorylates um, fru fructose, okay? And phosphatases dephosphorylate things. So fructose goes um, and is phosphated by uh, fructokinase into fructose 1-phosphate. And fructose 1-phosphate uh, gets broken down by aldolase B, aldolase B, that's very important, B, into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde. Okay. Now, what we want is for this glyceraldehyde to be turned into glyceraldehyde Phosphate, and that's done by the use of triokinase. Okay. Now trio because there's three carbons in glyceraldehyde, and kinase because it phosphorylates it. So then you get glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Okay. Now the two main deficiencies dealing with fructose metabolism have to deal with um, uh, fructokinase insufficiency and aldolase B insufficiency. And fructokinase insufficiency is a little bit more mild than aldolase B insufficiency. If you have a deficiency in fructokinase, um, you have what we call essential fructoseria. Um, and that's because you can't convert it into fructose 1-phosphate. And your source of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate will have to be from glucose. Okay? And basically what happens is you just have a buildup of fructose okay, in the blood, and then you essentially just pee it out. Um, so it goes into your, your urine. Um, so we call this essential fructoseuria, okay? Fructose in the urine, okay? Um, and basically, it's very mild. Um, you just get a, a buildup of uh, fructose in the blood and urine, okay? And it's very mild. Um, and basically, you can either treat this by lowering the fructose in your diet or basically just, uh, just not doing anything. Okay, because it, it's very benign, um, because fructose doesn't enter your cells. Okay, so it doesn't cause cellular swelling, um, and that's essential fru essential fructoseuria uh, deficiency in fructokinase. And the nef next deficiency is with aldolase B. Okay, and this is called fructose intolerance, um, and it's much more severe than uh, essential fructoseuria. Basically, what happens is you have fructose one phosphate, but you can't turn that into DHAP and glyceraldehyde, okay? So you have a buildup of fructose 1-phosphate, and it's very severe because you have a consumption of all this phosphate. You have all this fructose turning into fructose 1-phosphate. So you have a consumption of phosphate, and what happens with the consumption of phosphate is you inhibit glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis because you need to add a phosphate group um, onto glucose or glycogen um, in order to convert it into glucose, okay? Uh, energy used by the body. Um, and therefore, you have hypoglycemia, uh, jaundice, because you have dif dysfunction in the liver, as well as cirrhosis, and vomiting, because you, it's, uh, also comes from dysfunction in the liver, okay? And you treat this by just limiting fructose uh, entirely, or sucrose, because sucrose is glucose plus fructose, okay? Um, so it's very severe, and let's review. Uh, so you have a buildup of fructose 1-phosphate, which uh, collects all this phosphate, all this organic phosphate, Okay, and you lower the available phosphate for use of gly for use in glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. Okay, so you can't turn uh, glucose into energy you can use. So you have hypoglycemia, uh, jaundice, cirrhosis, and vomiting because you have liver dysfunction because that's where gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis occur. Okay, and you basically treat it by just uh, limiting all fructose sources. So pure fructose uh, found in like uh, uh, fruit juices and also sucrose, which is table sugar. So now I want to talk about some stuff I didn't talk about before. And both of these things, essential fructoseuria and fructose intolerance, uh, defect in fructokinase and defect in aldolase B, are both autosomal recessive traits. Okay? And the other thing I want to mention 
is uh, the alternative pathway to, in order to get energy. So you know you have fructose going to fructose 1-phosphate, um, which is split by aldolase B into DHAP and glyceraldehyde. <coughs> Um, and the glyceraldehyde turns into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate through triokinase, and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate goes on to make pyruvate, which you can use for energy. Okay, and the alternative pathway is to just use glucose. Okay, um, so let's go over that. So you start off with glucose, which is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, and you go all the way down here. Okay, and that's changed into fructose 6-phosphate. And here's, here's some interesting pathways here. Okay, you have fruc phosphofructokinase 1 over here, which phosphorylates fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Okay, and you can bypass this pathway by using fructose. Um, you notice that we only phosphorylated it once um, in order to go to uh, uh, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, okay, um, going down here. Okay, so you start with glyceraldehyde, and then you go to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, okay. Because you didn't phosphorylate it twice, you don't have this phosphorylated intermediate and you can just you can just use triose kinase in order to get g3p okay so you have, if you have a deficiency in phosphofructokinase um, you could just use fructose in your diet in order to get the energy you need so let's follow this back up okay so you have fructose 1,6 bisphosphate okay and you can turn that back into uh, into storage um, by turning this into fructose 6 phosphate by fructose bisphosphate phosphatase 1 okay so it's a bisphosphate and you remove one of the phosphates phosphatase on the fructose, okay, so fructose bisphosphate phosphatase, I love the way they name these things, um, and then you go back to fructose 6-phosphate, okay, and we'll get to, we'll get to more pathways later, um, but anyway, um, you go down here, and you have aldolase A and B, that's important, A and B for glucose metabolism, um, and you split that in G3P and DHAP, and G3P goes on to make pyruvate, and that's a little summary of the, of, of the glucose pathway. Uh, so let's review. All right, so you get fructose in your diet from sorbitol and sucrose. Uh, splitting of sucrose goes into uh, glucose and fructose. Okay, and you phosphorylate this into fructose one phosphate by fructokinase. Okay, deficiency in that leads to a buildup of fructose. Okay, and then you see that in the blood and the urine. So we call that essential fructoseuria. Um, and the treatment, um, you don't really, it doesn't really need to be a treatment, just limit fruit juices. Um, <clears throat> um, but basically you just pee it all out and it's fine. Okay. And then fructose 1-phosphate um, gets split by aldolase B. Okay. Remember that glucose gets split by al aldolase A and B, but fructose gets split by aldolase B into DHAP, dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and glyceraldehyde. We'll call that GLY. Okay. Um, and if you have a deficiency in aldolase B, um, basically what happens is you have a buildup of fructose 1-phosphate, okay, and you have a lowering of the phosphate stores. And what happens is you have a defect in gluconeogenesis and glyconeogenesis, um, glycogenolysis, my bad, um, which results in hepatic damage, which causes jaundice, cirrhosis, and vomiting. And since you since you don't undergo glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, you also have hypoglycemia, okay? And this is called fructose intolerance, and fructose intolerance is way more severe than essential fructoseuria. So just think about fructoseuria, you're just peeing it out, it's fine, whatever. But intolerance means that it affects you in some way, you are intolerant to it. And hopefully this helps you out.